Self-revealization, acceptance, an introduction, living your life by your divine right to live in joy and freedom. I'm just going to go over the table of contents with you here. We start with a foreword, a foreword, man. and it says, right, no introduction is necessary. Now, right away, this is putting it in a different place. Introduction, right? the book is supposed to be an introduction to SRA, self-revealization acceptance. No introduction is necessary. And as we go through each of the additional programs and episodes that we're going to be doing, every one of these things is going to explain. Chapter 1. Everyone and everything in the universe, everyone and everything in the universe is a complete and total success. Everyone and everything, everyone and everything in the universe is a complete and total success. What a guy's a failure. Well, maybe that aspect of failure is a success from the perspective of seeing that he elevates or she elevates themselves to a higher level of awareness and overcome that. If they can't overcome it, SRA will overcome it through them. Through them. Chapter 2, Understanding Selfishness. Understanding Selfishness and why it is good. Well, there's two types of selfishness. There's pure selfishness, there's impure selfishness. Understanding Selfishness and why it is good. Coming to terms with abundance. Coming to terms with abundance. You can't accept your abundance? Self-revealization acceptance will show you how, through the power of the spirit of the thing itself, acting in direct concert with the creative power of the universe, how to deal with your abundance. Coming to terms with abundance. Ah, the intelligent use, the intelligent use of faith. The intelligent use of faith. Faith? You don't use faith. You sure do. But you don't want faith in something as much as you want the faith of something in you so that you become the instrument of expression of the creative power of the universe. Intuitive knowingness, not belief, knowingness. You have to know. You can't just, I really believe this is going to happen. Okay. When? It's going to happen. When? Soon. Ah. You're putting a restriction on it. You're putting a restriction on it that's based on your limited ability to determine your experiencing that particular condition you want. It, capital I, capital T, it is whole and complete. The creative power of the universe does not report to a supervisor. You, as an aspect of the creative power of the universe, also do not have to appear, or you, as a creative aspect of the universe, do not have to report to a supervisor. I'm not talking about your nine to five here. I'm not talking about, hi, honey, I'm going to watch the game. Take out the garbage, okay? I'm not talking about that. You are your own authority. As long as you understand the parameters of the society and the structure of that society that you are living in. If you don't, there are certain factors that will restrict your erroneous behavior. 
igniting the fires of passion. Nothing gets done. Wow, that's cool, man. I'm going to definitely do that. I'm going to definitely do that. Well, that may be your over, your, that may be your open way of speaking. That may be your open way of speaking. But I'm going to do it. I know. Ah, whoops. I know I'm going to do it. I believe I can do that. Well, okay, cool. I know I can do it, and I will do it. Will, not willpower. Willpower is a very debilitating form of ego, uh, ego, ego aggrandizement. Annihilating negative sentiment and deconstructing manipulative grace. Okay. Negative sentiment is that action that occurs inside you when you're doing something. You really don't want to do it, but you figure, okay, you don't want, you don't want to cause any problems or cause any aggravation for anybody. Well, let me tell you something. Negative sentiment will kill you slowly. It will break your spirit. It will break your heart. And it'll break your ability to look in the mirror and love you for the great thing that you are. Because you'll be considering the needs of others before you'll consider the needs of yourself. What you have to do is come to terms with accepting yourself as this profound, great masterpiece. Once you do that and you have love and you treat yourself the way you, you want to be treated, you treat yourself the way you want to be treated, you have no problem going out and treating other people in the same way. Now, don't forget, what we're doing now, we're giving a very cursory overlook as to what self-revealization acceptance is. Can't get very heavy with it at the beginning. It's like walking into, uh, hi, I just finished my uh, algebra class and all these other math classes. And now this guy's talking about quantum physics. Yeah, I, I hear what he's saying. It makes sense. It doesn't make sense. No. So little by little, you got to get into this. This is volume two in the Self-Revealization Acceptance Canon. This is called Practicing Self-Revealization Acceptance, 52 Weekly Ascensions to Empower Your Life. I want to go through the bullet points, uh, to, actually the chapters, the specific chapters. We're not going to delve into any of the chapters. We're going to read them off, okay? I want to just listen to them and say, wow, that's an interesting subject, or that's not an interesting subject. It doesn't matter. I just want you to hear what they say, okay? There's no introduction in the book. It's a forward. No introduction is necessary. Chapter one is everything and everything in the universe is a complete and total success. A complete and total success. Chapter two, understanding selfishness and why it is good. The two aspects of selfishness, pure and impure. Coming to terms with abundance. Now, abundance is not always good. Sometimes you can have an abundance of grief come to terms with abundance. The intelligent use of faith. The intelligent use of faith. Having faith in something is one thing. Having the faith of something in you is much better. Intuitive knowingness. You already know those things you should do and not do. Whether you do them or not is another story. I'll tell you how to get in touch with your intuition. It, capital I, capital T, it, however you want to call the creative power of the universe, it is total and complete. It's infinite, so therefore it contains the finite. Igniting the fires of passion. You can't get anything done unless you're really on fire to get it done and to experience it. Annihilating negative sentiment and deconstructing manipulative grace. Okay, these are new terms for most of you. Negative sentiment is what you feel when you're doing something that you really don't want to feel, but you figure you might as well do it because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and therefore suffer the slings and arrows of their retribution, so to speak, if they have it. Deconstructing manipulative grace is how to come to terms with things called flattery. Now, flattery can be good or bad. You know, abject flattery is the worst insult there is. Okay? It's the worst insult there is, abject flattery. Hey, that's really great. I, wow, that, ooh, wow. Hey, can you help me do this and this, that, and the other thing? They're manipulating you. Manipulative grace. They may not even know they're doing it, but you're going to know they're doing it and how to deal with it. Very important. 
Everything you do in life has to be done with ease and grace. If you're knocking yourself out and really busting your shoes to get something done, you're not doing it right. Simple as that. This no pain, no gain, well, that's a concept that some people use. I don't particularly subscribe to it. We'll discuss that as well. You know, you have any questions about any of this thing, Hanchi's world at gmail.com. Here's one. You will, W-Y-L-L, you will now or you won't later. Now, I'm not talking about willpower. Willpower is a very debilitating thing that, that, that can break you down physically, mentally, and emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. Will it to happen? Don't force it to happen. If you want it, you got it. If you really want it, you've got it. How do you know you've got it? You live it. You live it. It's as simple as that. You will now or you won't later. Burning bridges. Why burning bridges behind you is essential. Oh, wait a minute. We're not supposed to burn bridges. Burn your bridges behind you in the same manner. Here we go with this one. This is going to get a lot of cards and letters. Put all of your eggs in one basket. Put all of your eggs in one basket. We'll get there. You don't reap what you sow, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You do not reap what you sow. You reap what you know. Again. You do not reap what you sow. You reap what you know. You reap what you know. It's all based on clarity of thought, clarity of purpose, and fullness of acceptance of your divine right to live in joy and freedom. As we go through particular aspects of the concept and of the methodology of self-revealization acceptance, and you come to terms with the facility of working with your spirit of the thing itself, getting it in direct connection with the creative power of the universe to bring about all that you wish to desire when you want it, right here, right now. Ah, escaping the morass. Morass. Escaping the morass of indifference and mediocrity. Escaping the morass of indifference and mediocrity. Accepting, accepting complete lavishness, lotsness, lotsness, L O T S N E S S, and limitlessness. Lavishness, lotsness, limitlessness. Multiple acceptance. Aha, one goal for two targets. You see where we're going here? Some of you may, some of you may not. But it doesn't matter. You're here, and you're here for the particular reason. Multiple acceptance, one goal, two targets. One goal, two targets. Think about that one. Okay.